Hello everyone and welcome back. I will be explaining in this video the different DBMS languages and interfaces and also the classification of DBMS. In one of our videos, we have seen the different database users that we have. So for each of these users, we have different interfaces and languages provided by the DBMS. So first let us see the different DBMS languages that we have. Once the database design is completed, the first thing done is to specify the conceptual schema and the internal schema and any mapping between these two levels. We have already seen in the previous video what each of these schemas are. In certain database management systems, there is no clear separation between these two levels. So in such DBMS, where there is no strict separation of levels, or where no strict separation of levels is maintained, a language called Data Definition Language or DDL is used to define these schemas, the internal schema and the conceptual schema. And this language is used mainly by the database administrators and the database designers. And DBMS has a DDL compiler to process the DDL statements. Whereas in certain database management systems, where there is a clear separation that is maintained between the conceptual and the internal levels, their data definition language or DDL is used to specify the conceptual schema alone. And another language called the storage definition language or SDL is used to specify the internal schema. And the mappings between the two levels, the conceptual level and the internal level can be specified using either the DDL or the SDL. And for a true three schema architecture, another language called the view definition language or the VDL is used to specify the user views and their mappings to the conceptual schema. That is, VDL is used to specify the views of each user group and also the mapping between the external level and the conceptual level. But in most database management systems, DDL or the data definition language is more than enough to define the conceptual schema and the external schemas. Once these schemas are specified during the database design and the database is populated with data, then the database users should be allowed to manipulate the data in the database. And manipulation could be retrieval of data, update or modification of data, insertion of data or deleting any data. And for all these operations or for the manipulation of data in the database, we have one language called the Data Manipulation Language or DML. A combination of Data Definition Language, Data Manipulation Language and View Definition Language is the SQL Database Language. Next, let us look into the types of DMLs or the Data Manipulation Languages. The two types of data manipulation languages is the high level or the non-procedural DML and the low level or procedural DML. The high level DMLs are used to specify the complex database operations in a concise manner or in a brief manner. Whereas the low level DMLs are embedded in a general purpose programming language like C, C++, Java, etc. This general purpose programming language is called the host language and whatever DML commands are embedded in the programming language that is called the data sub language. And a high level DML is also called set at a time DMLs because it can retrieve many records in a single DML statement itself. Whereas the low level DML is also called record at a time DML because it uses looping to retrieve and process each record from a set of records. So here it can retrieve only one record at a time and so it's called record at a time DML. Whereas in high level DML we can retrieve many records in a single DML statement and that is why it's called set at a time DML. So this is all about the languages provided by DBMS. That is the data definition language, the storage definition language, view definition language and data manipulation language. Next, let us look at the different interfaces provided by DBMS. The first one is the menu based interfaces. These interfaces present the users with a list of options called as menus and users send their request by selecting one of the options from this list of options. And a pull down menu is one of the most popular technique in web based user interfaces. Next is the form based interfaces. 
This kind of an interface displays a form to each user where these users can fill the necessary data. Forms are generally designed and programmed for the Nave users or the parametric users. We have already seen about Nave users in our video on database users. So these Nave users or the parametric users use canned transactions or the standard types of queries. Since they use a standard type of query, they use this form-based interface. The next kind of an interface is the graphical user interface or GUI. A graphical user interface displays a schema to the user in a diagrammatic form and the user manipulates this diagram and specifies a query. A graphical user interface utilizes both menus and forms and it uses a pointing device like a mouse to pick certain parts of the displayed schema diagram that they require. Next we have the natural language interfaces. These interfaces accepts requests in natural languages like English or some other language and tries to understand them. And how do they try to understand them? They have their own schema and dictionary of important words. And this schema is similar to the conceptual schema that we learned in the previous video. A natural language interface will refer to these while interpreting a request. If the interpretation is successful, then a high-level query is generated by the natural language interface that is corresponding to the request in the natural language and then submits to DBMS for processing the query. If the interpretation is not successful, then a dialogue is started with the user for further clarification. That is, a dialogue is sent to the user to clarify on the request sent by the user. Now the next type of interfaces that we have are the interfaces for parametric users. Parametric users or the Nave users like reservation agents, bank tellers, etc. have small set of operations that they must perform repeatedly. That is, they have certain operations that must be repeated almost on a daily basis. And for that, the system analysts and the programmers or otherwise called as engineers, they design and implement a special interface for these kind of users. Like abbreviated commands can be included with the goal of minimizing the number of keystrokes required for each request. So all these are provided by the system analysts and the programmers for the parametric users who perform a set of operations repeatedly. So that is the interface for parametric users. Next, we have the interfaces for the DBA or the database administrator. Most database systems have privileged commands like creating accounts, granting authorization access, changing a schema, etc. And these commands can only be used by a database administrator and its staff. So these are the different interfaces provided by DBMS, the menu-based the form-based interface, graphical user interfaces, natural language interfaces, interfaces for parametric users, and interfaces for the database administrator. Next, let us look into the classification of database management system. There are several criteria used to classify database management systems. So the criteria could be based on data model, number of users, cost of DBMS, number of sites, types of access path, generality, and so on. We will briefly look into few of these criteria. The first one is based on data models. The most popular data model used today is the relational data model. Database management systems like Oracle, MySQL use this kind of a data model. This model represents database as a collection of tables having fields or attributes. Then we have the object-oriented database model and these are based on real-world situations. And these real-world situations are represented as objects with different attributes and relationships between the objects. That is, this model defines database in terms of objects, their properties and their operations or relationships. Object-oriented database model uses similar concepts of object-oriented programming. But this model is not used widely. Other traditional models like the hierarchical model and the network model, otherwise called the legacy models, are used on older applications. The hierarchical data model represents data as tree structures starting from the root node. Here a child can only have one parent, but the network model was created to solve the shortcomings of a hierarchical data model. 
A network model allows a child node to be linked to multiple parents and this feature wasn't there in the hierarchical data model. So the network model represents objects and their relationships in the form of graph. But these legacy models, the hierarchical model and the network model are not commonly used because of their complexity. So these are the different data models based on which database management system is classified. The next criterion is number of users. Under this, we have the single user system that supports only one user at a time. And then we have the multi-user systems that supports multiple users at the same time or concurrently. And majority of database management systems come under this category. The third criterion is the cost of DBMS. Under this, we have the low cost, where the cost of these systems vary between $100 and $3,000. And then we have the medium cost DBMS, where the cost varies between $10,000 and $100,000. And finally, under this category, we also have the high cost DBMS, where the cost of these systems is more than $100,000. The next criterion is the number of sites over which the database is distributed. Under this, we have the centralized database system where the data is stored at one single site. So in a centralized database system, both the DBMS and the database reside at a single computer site. And this kind of a system can support multiple users. Whereas in a distributed database system, the DBMS and the database are distributed over many sites connected by a computer network. So these are the few criteria based on which a database management system is classified. And the main criterion for classifying database management systems is the data model. So with this, we come to the end of this video. In this video, we have seen the different languages and interfaces provided by DBMS for each group of users. And we also saw few of the criteria for classifying database management systems. Hope you all have understood these concepts. Thank you.